All right, so I better get my little clicker ready. All right, so let's just take a moment to um, just a little bit more intentionally bring ourselves into this time and place together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day and the way that you nourish the earth. We'd like some rain, thank you. And, um, but you nourish the earth, and, and you nourish us, and we're grateful for that. We thank you for bringing us to this time and place right here tonight. We know, Lord, that when we call on you and gather in your name, that indeed you're present. And so it is with great confidence that we do ask you, Lord, to be present. We ask you to bless our conversation and our sharing of our faith. We know that when we gather in your name, the grace and opportunities will flow. The grace as we listen to your word this evening and share our faith and the opportunity to get to know you better and through that knowledge to learn more about who you would have us be for you and for the world. And so we ask your blessing on us, all of us gathered here this evening. And so together we say, gracious God and Father, we enter into your presence, realizing you know us better than we know ourselves. You know the cares and sufferings we carry in our hearts. You call us to holiness and we trust you to lead us together on our journey to be a renewed church. For with you, all things are possible. Create us anew in Jesus Christ, your son. Liberate us from all that keeps us from you. Heal us from every form of sin and violence. Transform us to live your word more profoundly. Awaken us to the sacred. Rebuild trust among us enliven our parishes, reunite our families. May your Holy Spirit empower us to live as a community of love, free to share in your work of recreating our world and restoring justice. We believe you are doing something new, calling us to arise together in Christ to celebrate the fullness of life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so an overview of Arise, and this is where I may just ask all of you to kind of help me out here a little bit. Um, so where do you have to go to participate in Arise? Somebody, where do you have to go? Do you have to get on an airplane? Right in your parish, exactly, right in your parish. We're not asking you to travel up to Monterey. It's up, right, Monterey? Yes. <laughs> oh, that was, I had a 50-50 chance. <laughs> so uh, we're not asking you to go to Monterey. We're not asking you to go too far. Some of you did have to travel a little bit to get here tonight, and we sure appreciate that. But we're trying to group these workshops in places that will be convenient for you. But in terms of participating in the faith-sharing communities, it's going to be right in your, in your home parish. Okay. So that's where you have to go. Um, so when are we going to start this? October 5th. Wow, somebody even knew the date. Do we know what that happens to be? The 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And that's the time that we suggest that you start. You don't have to, as I said, but that's the time that we suggest you start. Oh, I already cheated and gave you the answer to the next one. So season one, six weeks. Every season is six weeks, and you meet once a week, 90 minutes. Where will you be meeting? Someone's home, most likely. Does it have to be somebody's home? Absolutely not. It doesn't have to be someone's home. If you're more comfortable meeting on, on the you know, grounds of the church, that's fine. Whatever works for you. Again, we're not forming little churches. You know? We're just having an opportunity to come together to share faith and to really to put our gospel faith into action and to figure out how can we do that uh, as missionary disciples. And the vehicle, of course, is small communities and faith sharing. Oh, I, I keep giving you the answer ahead of time. So I was going to say, so who's going to be doing this? Who's going to lead these groups? <laughs> and who are they? Oh my God, that's you. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? 
So um, it's exciting, really. And I know that each of you have exactly what you need to lead the group that you'll be leading. Some of you are going to do uh, lead groups together, right? You have some co-leaders, which is nice, uh, because guess what? Your groups are going to grow, and we encourage them to grow. We have to learn a little bit about that, too, because sometimes we want to hold on to what feels safe and comfortable. And oh my gosh, well, we love each other, and we don't want to have anybody new, because maybe it'll change. And then what will we do? <laughs> we'll become better. We'll become stronger, because as the body of Christ, we know that each of us has something to bring, some talent, some gift, some experience. So we w I really encourage you to stay open. There's nothing wrong with you. We're not telling you that you have to have a new group every session, a season, not at all. You know, Of course you want to stay together. But be welcoming as much as you can to somebody new. And if you're co-facilitating, guess what? You're one of those people that when your coordinator says, we have a whole new group. So can some of those co-facilitators jump off now and lead a group on their own? You might be called to do that. So train facilitator in each community. And we ask that each community member have their own book because it's, I mean, some people, you know, couples like to share, but you do like to make notes and that sort of thing. So I get that question a lot, so we thought we'd just offer that too, that that's really the ideal, okay? All right. Um, so the principles and guidelines of uh, faith sharing, of a faith sharing community. Um, so what are some of the things that you have to really keep in mind in a faith sharing community, do you think, in terms of how you treat each other and that kind of thing? Respect. Respect. How did you know that was the first one? Oh, it's not the first one. It's the second one. Keep confidences, though. I bet someone was going to say that, right? Confidentiality is just absolutely, that's why it's number one, really, because it really is very important. Uh, when someone d faith shares, it's something that uh, is very personal and can be private. And certainly, uh, we're faith sharing from the first person, so I would never repeat what Terry said in, in, during faith sharing, because it's her faith story, not mine. So we have to keep confidences. And um, when you look, many of you may have the Sowing Seeds book, and you'll see that it does have um, even a sower's commitment as something that you can print out and you can have everybody sign in your group, or certainly go over it, so that we're all on the same page about what's expected from, you know, from the group members. Keeping confidence, respect and openness. Respect and openness. So when Paul shares, I, I hate walking out of your camera, but when Paul shares something like, well, you're not, are you old enough to have a grandchild? Probably not. I have eight. <gasps> wow. You need a round of applause, I think. <laughs> That's beautiful. So when Paul shares that, uh, you know, in the session that he experienced the presence of Christ in the face of his newborn grandchild, Really? That's not what I'm going to say, right? I would never question that. I mean, what can I learn from that? If I've never experienced that, am I where am I looking for the face of Christ, right? So when we share with each other, we have an opportunity to grow in our understanding of how and where we can meet our Lord. So we want to be open to that. Obviously, I'm respectful uh, and listen with an open heart and open mind as people share. Um, so maybe this guessing game. How's this guessing game going? Um, <laughs> comfort level. That's really important, too. Everybody should share at their comfort level. So, um, you know, the process of evangelization is a lifelong process. The process of growing in our spiritual life, a lifelong process. No one's better, higher, further along. We're just in different places at any moment in time, aren't we? I mean, I know for myself it's true. You know, my faith journey, it's almost like a spiral, I kind of like to think of it. Hopefully it's moving upward, you know. But at times, you know, I, I kind of stall and fall back a little bit and have my doubts and my questions and I'm like, where did that come from? I never worried or thought about doubting that before. You know, what's happening now? Well, maybe there's something in my life or something happening. We recognize that and we try to find ways to recommit and to, to grow deeper in our faith and we just move you know, we, we are evangelized in so many different ways and we move along that spectrum. So we need to really uh, be open to people's growth and where they are and, and letting people share at their own comfort level, letting people kind of grow into it. Speaking in the first person, I think I just kind of alluded to that, right? It's my, you know, this is where I experienced uh, in the scripture. This is where I experienced God speaking or 
how I made the connection to my life. So it's always speaking in the first person. It would never be, you know, well, Deacon Tom said that, you know, and so therefore, or, oh gosh, Dan told a story the other day. This friend of mine, Dan, told a story the other day. Well, whose story is that? It's Dan's story, and we're probably not going to get it right anyway. So, um, you know, it's one thing to say, gosh, I heard about something uh, that happened in, out in the world. That's what we're doing. We're, we're looking at the world, and then we're saying, looking at scripture, so that we can understand what's happening in the world. And then beyond that, well, what am I supposed to do about it? How am I supposed to react to what's happening in the world? So it needs to be my, from where I'm living. And not that I have an answer, but that it, this, these are my own thinking and, and what's happening with my faith and, and how I'm growing through my understanding of scripture and, and how that's affecting me. So first person's important. And then action. You know, at Renew, we really focus on this, and this is one of the things that I think is so wonderful and uh, probably one of the reasons the bishop was interested in this program is that beyond forming the small communities and having that opportunity to share faith, we then challenge ourselves at the end of every session to say, what am I going to do this week now to put this faith into action? And we're going to talk more about that in terms of how do you